Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second part of section 13.4, double angle and half angle identities. You guessed it, ladies and gentlemen, because it is the second part of this section, we are just going to deal with the half angle identities. In the first part, we dealt with double angle identities. In the second part, we are dealing with half angle identities. How do we know when we are dealing with half angle identities? There will be theta divided by two after your trig function. And that tells you that we are dealing with the half angle identities. So if we look at them, half angle identity for sine is the square root of, now ladies and gentlemen, one minus cosine theta over two. Cosine theta over two is positive neg negative square root, again, one plus cosine theta over two and then tangent theta over two is positive negative square root one minus cosine theta over now one plus cosine theta notice ladies and gentlemen that we are always dealing with cosine theta in half angle identity so if we're not given cosine we'll have to set up a right triangle so let's take a peek at some of these problems we are asked to find the exact value of each expression if sine theta equals three-fifths and theta is in the second quadrant. Well, the first thing we want to do, since we are given sine, notice again how our, our identities call for cosine, we are given sine here. We're going to set up our right triangle. We want to solve for a right triangle. Well, sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. So in our right triangle, we go opposite, which is three, and our hypotenuse is Five. Let's solve for that right triangle with Pythagorean. So we go 3 squared plus b squared. That's going to equal 5 squared. We keep going 9 plus b squared equals 25. b squared equals 16. And then we have b after we square root. That's going to equal 4. So our missing side equals 4. So our cosine now, our cosine of theta is going to be 4 because it's adjacent, 4 over 5. So now when we're asked to find the cosine of theta over 2, we're going to be using this guy right here. Now ladies and gentlemen, since we are in the second quadrant, what is cosine in the second quadrant? Cosine is going to be negative in the second quadrant. So that second quadrant tells me that cosine is going to be negative. So I have now the square root of one plus a negative, a negative four fifths because Cosine is negative in the second quadrant. That goes over from my formula two. Let's keep rocking with this. We have the square root of one fifth now over two. We keep going. We get the square root of one tenth. Remember that square root goes to top and bottom. So it's gonna be the square root of one over the square root of 10. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have a square root in the bottom? No, we can't. So we have to multiply by the square root of 10 on the bottom and on the top. So we multiply across the top to get the square root of 10 over just a plain old 10 because it's a square root times a square root, which cancels each other out. So it's just going to be the square root of 10 over 10. Now, since we used a negative cosine for our identity, we just use whatever it comes out to be. Since it came out to be positive, we are going to leave it positive. But yet again, that's because we changed this cosine to a negative. Let's check out part B. Now we're using tangent, the half angle identity for tangent. We still use cosine. This cosine that we're going to use is going to be a negative four fifths. So let's go ahead and plug it in. We have one big square root that's going to be one minus on top and that's going to be a negative four fifths. Close that up. That goes over. Now it's going to be one plus a negative four fifths. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to keep going right across the top and the bottom keeping it all in the square root. Now I'm going to clean up positive, negative, negative, positive. 
So it's going to be 1 plus 4 fifths. That's going to go over 1 minus 4 fifths. Cleaning up some more on top. We have 9 fifths over 1 fifth. And all of that is in the square root. If you punch this into your calculator now, ladies and gentlemen, something nice here happens. And I'm just talking about 9 fifths divided by 1 fifth. If you want to, you can flip and multiply. That's going to be the square root of 9. Well, we know what the square root of 9 is. That is 3. Since we used a negative cosine here, ladies and gentlemen, we can just use what we are given, and that's 3, or what we get, and that's 3. So it is a positive 3. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you know what your cosine value is that is being positive or negative depending on the quadrant. You can use that CAS method where you start in quadrant 4 where cosine is positive and cosine is also positive in quadrant 1, quadrant three and f or 2 and 3. Cosine is negative. So that is a big deal when you're dealing with half angle formulas. However, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for section 13.4, double angle and half angle identities, part two. Good day.